Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dave Thomas, also known as 7sharp9, and today we're going to be doing another video in the Language Essentials series, let's call it that. This series I'm going to be covering various aspects of different languages, basically the core features of different languages. So last time we covered F-sharp and quotations. Today we're going to be covering another feature of F-sharp, but first let's have a nice relaxing walk around the park. Today's topic is object expressions in F sharp. They allow you to use a very low ceremony syntax to implement interfaces or base types with member overrides. So typically you could use these to implement interface heavy libraries or to customize a type with a very simple behavioral overload. And they essentially just allow you to use types in a very streamlined fashion. So hopefully when we look at some examples, it'll make a bit more sense. When you use object expressions, it's, it's worth bearing in mind there's a set of limitations that limit the scope of usage that they can be used for. So one of the first ones is that they can't be used inside quotations. The first type or interface that's featured in the expression is, is the type that's actually returned from the object expression. So if you implemented, say, a base type, which is type X, then you also implement it in an interface afterwards, the type returned would be the base type. Another limitation is that the constructors must be accessible from the objects that you're inheriting from, otherwise you cannot create an instance. Also, protected members can be accessed within the member declarations, but they are the only places where you can access them. You can't access them inside any kind of um, closure or let binding that's also within the same expression. If you're thinking of using these with provided types, you can only use object expressions with generative types. Any arrays types cannot be used in as part of object expressions. You can't use them as a, a base type. You also have to remember that members are either abstract methods or overrides from the base type to be able to use them in the object expression. But the, the, the scope of the usages of object expressions are to, as a, as a shortcut syntax to, for, for types that are really simple, where you, you kind of add an extra behavior or, or a very simple modification to what the type does. <laughs> To start things off, I'm going to show you the simplest syntax I can think of to show off object expressions. So with, with this syntax, you start with the opening curly brace, then you have to use the new keyword followed by either the type or an interface, and then your member definitions after the with statement. So this particular implementation would create an implementation of system object, and it would override toString and print hello world. I forgot to use the default constructor for the object. You can see there in the output, it's actually invoked to string. We can test that ourselves using the printf function. So there we have it, very simple. And that's the minimal implementation that I can think of that shows off the syntax. So we'll get rid of interactive now. And I'll show you another implementation, but using something more interesting. So here I'm creating a new iOS single view project, and we're just going to try something really simple. We'll start by clearing the view controller completely. And we'll create a new view controller from scratch using an object expression. So here we're going to create a new view controller by inheriting from UI view controller. And then we were going to override view did load and we were going to call the, the base view did load function and then we will set the background color on the view to green. 
So there we just had to put the view controller inside a module because you can't have flat bindings inside a namespace. Now to get iOS to use this view controller, we need to invoke it from the app delegate. So let's do that now. So because we're launching the view controller manually, we need to do a few things first. So let's get those done. So first we need to initialize a window to a new UI window, passing in the main screen bounds. Normally iOS would be would do this for us if we were using a storyboard. It would it would assign this itself and it would create a new instance of a, a view controller, but here we're gonna do it manually. So here we're just gonna create a local instance of the view controller. And now we're going to set the root view controller to the controller that we just assigned and also make this key invisible so that it can be shown on the screen. So you can see there, the screen is turned green, which is um, which is proof we can do it. So th this is it's not exactly a real world example, but it's kind of an example of how you'd use this in a, a real application where you would maybe just want to create an instance of a view controller and you'd only want to make a change to a small fragment of the behavior. Like here where we're assigning just the, the basic color green. What we can do is we could go back to the view controller and make the view controller take a parameter so we could pass it the a color at this point here instead. Rather than being green as a constant, we could actually pass it a color or we could pass it a fragment of a, a control to use or something like that. But for now, let's let's change it quickly to use a color. So now we're just gonna pass in color to the view controller so that it can be used. So now we're back in the app delegate. We need to actually pass a view controller the, the color. So now we can just pass in the color blue and run it again. So you can see that the blue backgrounds appeared there. Object expressions are not meant to completely replace types, but they are intended for use cases where you would maybe be using um, a library which is very interface heavy. So you'd have to create lots of very small types which are very similar. I just realized that I never showed you how to use interfaces. Essentially, when you've created one of these object expressions, you can either start with a type or an interface, or if you do start with a type or an interface, you can follow it by more interfaces. So now I'm gonna create a really simple interface to use with this object expression. We'll create a single method called change, which will just take a unit and return a unit. So now let's implement that on the view controller. To do this, we use the interface keyword with the interface name, then the with keyword, and then we just implement the members of the interface. So now we can use this interface in the app delegate. You can see here the interface isn't present. That's because F Sharp implements interfaces explicitly. You also remember earlier that the first type within the object expression is the type that's returned. So in this case, it's the UI view controller that's returned. So we need to actually cast the controller to the interface type we've implemented to be able to use it. So you can see there, because the screen's turned red, the interface has been called and all of our code's been invoked. So I think that covers all the different aspects of object expressions. If you made it this far, why not subscribe to the channel so you can get future updates. I won't just be including F Sharp in future episodes. I will be covering Swift and Kotlin in the near future, as well as going back to F Sharp quotations as well and other aspects of metaprogramming in F Sharp because that's been requested by you guys. So I will be looping back to, to cover those in the near future. If you like this video, whack that like button and I will see you next time.